First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this important international conference for giving me the chance to participate in the works, though at the moment I am in the Philippines in a journey which have been planned long before. It's an honor, therefore, for me to participate with a recorded speech, and I hope that my innocentry collaborators, Tony Compagno, Maurizio Parente, and Arianna Pucci, who will be following the session via web, shall positively contribute to your debate in my absence. I feel very much the responsibility of speaking about the theme you have assigned to me. I mean, in a moment when there is a lively debate in Europe on how the early childhood education and care services can be boosted by appropriate policy initiatives and how not only the quantity but also the quality of these services can be the focus of such policies to the benefit of the children and their families. I'd like to remark this reference to a quality issue that trains also a reference to the issue of the fundamental identity of the early childhood education and care services. And I think that the fact that the international debate can open up to a share of concepts, values, and suggestions to policymakers is a very promising and exciting perspective. My reflection will draw from the experiences that I best know, which are those developed in Tuscany. In this Italian region, the ECEC system has been studied and made the object of two recent publications directed by me and Professor Enzo Catarzi, which try to disseminate what can be called the Tuscan approach to childhood education. Let me then give you a few data to better understand the situation in Italy and in Tuscany. According to the most updated data, the current network of facilities available for very young children in Italy offers educational services only to 23.9% of the 0 to 2 year old children, 17% of them attending needed infancia, 2.4% integrative education services, and the 5.1% infant schools as anticipatory. If you look deeper into the data, a differentiated picture will appear. In the, in the following chart, you can see that the distribution of the needy in Italy is very diversified. From this point of view, Tuscan region is a privileged location. On the whole, in Tuscany, about 33% of children between 3 months and 3 years of age attend an educational service for early childhood, and 100% of children between 3 and 6 years of age attend an infant school. After these few figures about the context, allow me to introduce the concept of the recognition of the image of children. This is the point I want to stress. Before being able to speak about the identity of ECEC services and their quality, we have to share some considerations and reflections on a fundamental issue. Such an issue is the 
children's identity. The image that we are thinking of is a child who is from the beginning a person who is older of rights and bearer of competencies. In this perspective, children are the protagonists of their own processes of growth. On the contrary, a predictable child, that is a child who has not the opportunity to express himself actively and constructively, frees the educator from many burdens and, most of all, from the responsibility to listen beyond what has already been established, supported by a supposed awareness of what to do and for what purpose. As if nature had given to the human species the innate potentials of immaturity only so that it could be freed of them as quickly as possible. Such an image is very far from the idea of a child who is weak, passive, and in need of care and protection. We believe that pedagogy, education, and the project of ECC services should be built around such an image. Taking into account children's potentials does not only mean trusting in children, but also assuming a concrete responsibility to guarantee proper opportunities for their expression. Starting from this assumption, some fundamental aspects of a project of EC services should be developed on new basis. First, the educational role of the adults is completely transformed and the central issue of documentations comes forward. Second, the issue of designing the contexts and the spaces arises. Third, the families are identified as founding partners of the ECEC project. Let's start with the educational role of the adult. Assuming the image of young children as strong, rich and full of potential requires a corresponding transformation in the role of the educators and pedagogues. Consequently, their action will be based much more on structuring the contexts rather than on providing direct stimuli to children's action, much more on the capacity to recognize and expand the diversities of the children's behavioral styles rather than on an anxious will to conduct them to precise and predefined skills objectives, much more on the attention to the process of action of children as the expression of an individual evolutionary strategy than on the need to certify the stage of development reached within general parameters. All these new attitudes open up to dialogue, sharing, exchange and comparing of ideas, both between children and adults and between adults. Not only this approach leaves no place for predetermined outcomes, but it rather introduces the issue of the very notion of curriculum, how it is intended all through the world as a pre-established sequence of actions to be increasingly implemented to early childhood services.
Rather than educators and pedagogues delivering curricula, we should talk of strategic action as the driving force for planning. While the term curriculum involves a series of predetermined operations implemented to obtain predetermined outcomes, the word strategy requires the ability to take advantage of and to work with the opportunities and connections that emerge in the educational context. A strategy is constructed as the action takes place and is the art of using the information produced in the action to integrate it to formulate certain schemes of action on the spot and to enable oneself to gather the maximum certainty for confronting that which is uncertain. Central to the educational work as open and collegial is the role of documentation by which educators and pedagogues or any other observer, submit their observation, which are not a mirroring of reality, but an interpretation of reality, to collegial reflection and critical discussion that can enhance their meaning and shared value. This creates a very specific image of the educators and pedagogues whose main role is to organize contexts and opportunities rather than merely leading children towards predetermined outcomes. The educators and pedagogues enables connections between people, ideas and experiences and in so doing they are removed from the fallacy of certainties and must instead take on a responsibility to choose, experiment, discuss, reflect and change and maintaining in their work the pleasure of amazement and wonder. We are here a long way from the teacher as technician an image increasingly dominant in the advanced liberal societies, much closer to the image of the educator as reflective practitioner and researcher. This educator is like the child, strong, competent, curious and active, a rich educator, a protagonist, as much as the child. Now our second point relating to the issue of the context. Rather than a place for the uniform application of human technologies to achieving standardized outcomes, ECEC services are understood to be a context where children and educators as protagonists share daily life, create relationships and experiences and generate new understandings and therefore new knowledge. Designing uh, educational activities starting from the organization of opportunities is very important because it makes it possible to highlight the processes and strategies used by each individual child giving value to their diversities, leading to a number of important positive consequences. For this reason, the context is a real key player. It's the indispensable placenta that generates, nourishes, contains and reflects undergoing modifications over time the unfolding of the educational action supporting the children and educators 
who are its protagonists and offering the necessary support to the onset and development of their constructive process of reciprocal relationships and evolution. Then the third point that is the issue of the families. Family participation consists in parental involvement in the social management of services, but as part of the need for parents to share in the educational project, the benefits of which enable women and men to construct their identities as fathers and mothers. For the parents, sharing their children's experiences through the discussion of the observations and documentations collected by the educators offers an opportunity to relate with a real and concrete image of their children's potential and provides them with valuable suggestions on how to develop their educational role as parents. The exchange of experiences between parents of very young children in the presence of an educator helps them in feeling less alone and supports them in developing their parental role with a positive attitude. Families are considered protagonists together with children and educators of the pedagogical project of the service and in this view the occasions of meeting with families are not realized in the perspective of supporting and giving advices to weak and in need parents but in the perspective of education as a process of sharing, listening, communication and dialogue among all the protagonists that are involved. The value placed on parental participation reveals the vacuity of the home nursery dualism. The problem is how to offer children and their parents different but complementary environments not removing responsibilities from parents but rather strengthening them in their role and deepening their understanding of their own and their child's identity and educational potential. In conclusion, we can consider the experience of Tuscan as a kind of ecological experiment that enables us to read and interpret certain interesting phenomena. In immediate terms, the significant and qualified presence of ECEC services lets parents to embrace the educational value that the ECEC services hold for both the children and the families. In the medium and long term, there is a clear relation between the significant and qualified presence of ECEC services and the presence of women on the job market, the propensity toward motherhood and fatherhood, the sharing among parents of the responsibilities of child care, and furthermore, attention to individual diversities, intercultural relations and the prevention of phenomena of school dropout and abandonment. That is the reason why, in conclusion, we want a universally available service that is conceptualized as a public responsibility and one that attests to the virtuous relationship that can be established between the recognition of children's protagonism, community participation, and public policy. Thanks for your attention.